Hi guys, this is Abhishek from Fuji Film. Today we'll be having a live session with uh, Karan and me. So I'll be talking about Fuji Film cameras for a little while, and then Karan will take over to show his wedding images, and he'll be taking the presentation for today. Okay, before uh, we start, I have a small video of Fuji Film. We'll start with that, and then we'll go to the presentation of Fuji Film. XT200 video which was shot in Varanasi. Uh, I shot this video just to explore how XT200 works and uh, we shot extra clips or b-roll with uh, XT3 Fujifilm XT3 camera. So this particular video completely shot on uh, Fujifilm and you can see it in our uh, Fujifilm X India YouTube channel. We are coming up with a lot of content videos and Fujifilm uh, videos, training, tutorials and we also have a Zach Ares workshop coming up on 24th July. So before we start uh, with actual session today on uh, wedding, uh, how to use the wedding photos or how to do a wedding pho photography with current style. So we'll be taking through the Fujifilm cameras a little bit so people can know what is Fujifilm cameras. Fujifilm is always known for their innovation and be it in mirrorless cameras or film technology, film cameras, we were always innovating a new kind of cameras and films or lenses. So right now we are producing APS-C cameras which is almost equivalent to your 35mm format uh, quality and if you want higher quality, higher resolution, we can use GFX which is a medium format cameras. We have three options there. So we'll talk about that a late, little later. Before any camera company manufactures a camera, the first thing we hear in the launch is that there is these many specifications we have, this is the particular product, it can go this, uh, it has so many features and all that stuff. But before that, a camera company prefers to have an ideology behind their cameras. So before giving any faster cameras or with good specification and new cameras, we have a ideology in that particular cameras is that what the camera stands for, what is the purpose of that particular camera for photographers. So we had three points in this in Fujifilm cameras if I talk about. The first point is the color reproduction. It is because we are the film company from 84, 85 years and we have produced a good quality and it's already reputed uh, like the films are widely popular all, all, around, all around the world. So the color reproduction which is created in the films those days, the same color reproduction has been done in our mirrorless cameras as well. So we call it Fuji Film Simulations, we talk about that later also. And uh, second point is lens quality. Even in the kit lens or any other lens, not just the red batch premium lenses, we all the other lenses which is there in Fujinon, it's high quality precision lenses. So the third point is the compact system of this particular cameras. If you see our Fuji cameras, it's the dial and the, the way it's structured, the ergonomics of this particular camera is very different from normal cameras you see. 
it is because it's user friendly and how the menu system is designed and the compactness of that particular camera is very much important to the photographers so these are the main three things which we believe in before making any cameras be it medium format 102 megapixel which is the la lightest medium format camera uh, and handheld shootable camera for 102 megapixel because it has five axis image stabilization so coming to the color reproduction when i talk about what is color reproduction is not just picture profile we put it in the camera right because many photographers choose to shoot directly from the camera and produce those images to client or even upload on social media and i've seen many people use film simulations from fuji in their raw files of from different brand camera companies as well because the colors which we produce in our films is something which is much more pleasant to the viewers and uh, the colors tonality is something different so we coming up with different kind of film simulations every year uh, first time first year we launched mirrorless cameras was in 2011 from there we have launched almost 16 to 18 film simulations in our cameras this year with xt4 we came up with eterna bleach bypass and yeah so these are the beautiful film simulations for cinema and photos so you can use this film simulations and directly images can be given to the client or the video can without color grading you can produce it or uh, showcase it, uh, showcase it so when i talk talk about mirrorless cameras talking in first mirrorless cameras which came in 2011 because of 9 years of development we have came up with fourth generation of mirrorless cameras and 33 plus lenses when we talk about mirrorless cameras there are brands which produces only 3 to 5 lenses and they do not have native lenses and they provide adapters for that and adapter is a temporary solution you will not be able to get out 100% performance out of the camera or the lenses so we have 33 plus lenses which is native lenses for the cameras and starting from 8 mm to 1000 mm we have all equivalent lenses and we're coming up with much more uh, lenses every year and if i talk about cameras what cameras do we have right now this is the lineup starting from xt100 which is 35000 rupees and uh, ending up with gfx100 which is around 8 lakh rupees we have wide ranges of cameras xa7 and xt200 is serious amateur uh, cinematographers or photographers xt30 and xt20 is semi professional cameras xt4 and xt3 are the flagship or the higher end models for photographers and cinematographers we all know what is xt4 capable of and not be exploring that uh, in this session so we have something called as range finder style cameras as well which only leica camera creates or fuji film creates so we have two models in that in x series x pro 3 and x100v uh, beautiful cameras when i come to medium format medium format is 70% bigger than your 35mm or full frame sensors so this gfx 50s and 50r is 50 megapixel cameras gfx 100 is 100 megapixel medium format camera so these are the lineup we have in fuji film Uh, so this is what I want to talk about Fujifilm cameras that we have huge lineup of cameras starting from thirty five thousand and wide uh, ranges of cameras for every genre of photography or cinematography. So XT two hundred, which you saw the video which I was uh, I created that especially for vloggers or social networking sites, people who are uh, getting into social networking sites right now, we can produce uh, like XT two hundred, XA seven, XT four, XT three, X Pro three. all this camera even gfx can be turned into a webcam so we'll be talking about that in a different session how to convert our x series cameras into webcam so you get high quality food live sessions uh, live streaming with your ca cameras you can use that with the uh, help of laptop or uh, a live streaming uh, this thing in your weddings as well so you can go with uh, high quality cameras live uh for your weddings i think this is a trend right now maybe it might take up in future as well okay so before we invite mr uh, karan uh so i have a small video on him uh, i'll play that video and then we'll continue to and we'll introduce him and we'll talk about him a uh, little more so please enjoy this video and uh, we'll be back soon
cool so yes karan you are live people can see you and uh, thank you so much i think you saw wonderful video on uh, how wedding rajat does and what kind of photography they do so yes we'll be hearing from mr uh, ram karan now and uh, he'll be taking us through what we'll be doing today and then he'll start uh, sharing and talk about him a little bit so today topic will be the art and craft of wedding photography so there are a lot of uh, live sessions which happens on wedding photography because to believe or not or india has a huge market of wedding photography nowadays so if i may ask you wedding photography right now what is the scenario what is the situation do you have that in presentation or not uh right now um, you know i mean due to this uh, pandemic uh, which is like uh, a huge uh, impact for all the wedding industry yeah. uh, in fact if you see our i just showed you the video right we were like 2020 the best is yet to come okay and i <laughs> never knew that we would actually face such a scenario so this is a challenge for all of us um, but yes we will go through it uh, we have to uh, go through this phase and we will definitely uh, come out out of it yes sure definitely so without uh, any delay we'll go to the presentation you can share your screen Okay, just a second, guys. So, people who are watching us, if you have any questions regarding his session or wedding photography or Fuji film cameras, anything related to this particular topic, you can ask in the comment section. I will take up those questions and ask Karan so that he will be able to answer. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, you can uh, comment in the comment section. I think Naveen is already watching. Hi, Naveen. How are you? Cool. So, okay. Yes, your screen is so, online. You can talk, Karan. Okay, it's full screen, right? I'm yes, just, they uh, can see your sure. screen. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. First of all, uh, thanks, Abhishek. Uh, thank you, Fuji, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you for everyone who is attending this talk. I promise to make it as uh, entertaining and uh, interesting as much as possible. Um, so. uh yeah let me just start uh, so that's me my name is ram karan i like to call myself a visual artist because i experiment with a lot of different mediums i was a 3d character animator in my previous job um uh, when i say different mediums i've been uh, experimenting with animation paintings i've done my masters in multimedia and also a bachelor's in fine arts okay so i'm the lead uh, photographer in uh, wedding raja and also the partner at storycraft media which is our main company uh, uh storycraft media helps uh, businesses communicate with photography and films okay and um, i fell in love uh, uh with my beautiful wife anusha uh, got married and uh, she's also a photographer she's a portrait and newborn specialist um uh, i'm supposed to be a super cool funny dad according to my 7 year old uh, daughter anushka and uh, the reason i have this picture is not because i have hair it's because i just love this picture okay now that's clear okay uh the art and craft of photography uh, that's what i'm going to be talking about so let's first understand what's art and the craft and what's the different difference between them okay art is an expression whereas craft is a technique um art is imagination it could be creativity skill um, i mean creative i'm sorry craft is a skill okay so art is something which is difficult to replicate it's not just that you see some image and you can easily replicate that you need to understand um, more in depth about it and even if you want to make another version of that okay or a series of that whereas craft is something which is easy to copy or to repeat because it's more like a technique it's it's more like a process which you can do it again and again okay and for both of it no the main thing is the how and the why okay it all comes down to the how and why you want to use the skill uh, or the craft or the art okay so um, i have this famous uh, i mean uh, this uh, favorite quote of mine which is uh, constraints breed creativity uh, this is uh, by chase jarvis the founder of creative life um, uh, i just love this uh, quote because uh, it, what it means is like limitations are going to make you think of solution uh, solutions okay so i'll just give you an example of this um so we were shooting this awesome sangeet uh, 
this was uh, in a fancy hotel uh, where we were actually um, just about to enter the um, i mean like uh, enter the sangeet hall they were supposed to welcome the couple and uh, uh, we were actually stuck in a parking lot uh, we were we just had about like few minutes just about to enter and uh, the the parking lot was really bad there wasn't any good uh, location or there wasn't anything great over there so i was trying to figure out how do i uh, get some unique picture okay and i saw this empty wall and it suddenly flashed to me that okay why don't we use a magmod uh, um a uh, pattern and put a color gel and uh, that's how we did this shot okay so uh we had this idea and we did this shot so that's the craft side of it and uh, it so happens that we had an awesome couple uh, who were like ready to do a- a- anything okay like you rarely get those couples who, when you tell them no like go for a kiss they will know my my uncle is watching and all that happens right but this couple was fantastic they were like super cooperative okay and that's how we made this shot but here's the thing uh this shot uh, was done in 2019 and the first time i experimented with this technique was in 2016 okay that's like 3 years before which look very similar okay so that's the reason i say that a uh, craft is super important we need to understand the gears only then we'll be able to do uh, and i mean like uh, do these kind of things and know exactly where to use them okay uh, so like i said what comes first is the craft okay not the art the craft because first you need to master your gears and your tools you need to know how your lights work uh, only then later after you cross that stage you know that's when you start learning which is art okay so um, like for example in this image this is shot by my colleague uh, pavan um, so here what is happening is uh, he is actually uh, been assisted by another person who's holding the light it's an off camera flash so basically he wanted to um remove the background uh, um the what do you say the um the whole background was actually kind of like um, everything was like everything everywhere okay i mean like you know right he wanted the focus of the viewers to be on the couple and not on the background the background was distracting okay so uh, even this image clearly tells you what's exactly happening it's like the priest is uh, doing the homa and the couple is least interested they are busy talking to each other and uh, also uh, what happens is you no know, uh, in this particular shot you can see there is a fire in front of them so usually without the light if you take the shot if you get the couple properly exposed the fire is over exposed so that's the reason you need to know to understand your gear where to use them and how to use them how they will serve your purpose okay so this all comes under the craft side of it okay now let's talk about the art part of the wedding photography okay this is the thing which makes you stand out okay let's uh, just see this example now this is a shot i mean this this is captured by two different photographers at the same moment you can see it's actually the exact same moment uh, but they both look totally different so what's making it stand out okay uh, obviously the right image uh, the left image is not bad okay i mean like you can see everything clearly uh, but the right image is looking more creative but again it looks creative but it doesn't really convey the story or anything right it looks like a creative cool portrait the reason actually i did this shot was basically i was getting ready for the dance to start and have my settings ready okay so i'll show you the shot what i was actually looking to get okay so this is the shot what i was actually getting ready for so that setting what i did over there was basically uncle was the test subject for me okay so i knew the um, there's going to be a crazy dance this was a crazy sangeet um, we had lot of booze we had lot of crazy friends perfect combination for an awesome sangeet um and uh, so how we made this shot or why i actually used that technique or what's the uh, logic behind this is see it's very easy to show motion or the energy um in a video when you can see people dancing okay but it's not that simple when you have to show it in just one picture to um, like kind of show the um emphasis i mean like emphasize on the energy and show the essence of the uh, moment so that's the reason i used a slow shutter okay th- so the way i did this is i used a slow shutter i used an higher aperture so that i get uh, everything sharp and um, i had an on camera flash 
and I added motion um, or shake to my camera. So basically, I was like uh, purposely shaking my camera while I was shooting. Okay, if you guys want to dig in more on this, you can look for, uh, I mean, like just Google shutter drag or uh, rear curtain sync flash. Okay, so um, uh, don't you guys think that uh, this actually, uh, what do you say, like elaborates the whole scene, makes it unique? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's talk about another part of our, another art in uh, wedding photography. That is the art of storytelling. Okay. So this was the first wedding I ever captured in my life. I never knew even at this point that I would be a wedding photographer. This was captured in 2010. This was a runaway wedding of my friend. Uh, this was in Dharmastara and uh, this is a small marriage hall where you have a lot of uh, 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 weddings happening simultaneously. Okay, uh, this particular image or moment is very special to me because um, I knew these two were struggling a lot. They were going through a lot of difficult times to get their parents to agree and all that. And uh, so that look on both their face, it's like we've finally made it. It's like they know that they're going to get married. So this particular wedding changed my whole perception uh, about wedding photography. Um, and uh, it made me realize how important our work as photographers is for the couple and what meaning it gives to them, okay? Uh, these are priceless, in fact. Um, so another thing I wanted to tell you was, this was the first time I ever had someone come to me and ask me like, Sir, uh, you have to capture that wedding also. And um, I was like, Sir, uh, I'm not a wedding photographer. I, I, I'm just shooting my friend's wedding. So the first ever inquiry I had, I said no, okay? Yeah. So, uh, the whole goal of uh, storytelling, okay, if I have to put it in um, two simple sentences, um, it's to help the viewer uh, understand the mood and emotions, okay, and it's to help the couple to relive those moments. So, let me just talk about the picture now. Um, you can see from the image itself uh, and uh, understand that um, all our Indian weddings are usually awesome, okay? They're fun, it's not boring. It's always, there's fun, there's laughter, there's a lot of emotions. It's like a carnival of emotions. And this wedding was no different. In fact, you guys should check out the teaser of this wedding. It's super funny. It's in our YouTube channel. Um, it's Charita and Kushal. Um, so in this image, you can see the image and you can understand by the look on the bride's face, her confidence and the groom's expression of no over there that you get it like who won. Okay. So basically it's to help the viewer to understand what's happening in the world. That's the first point I said. And also for the couple. Okay. The second point that is to help the couple to relive those moments. Okay. Imagine how cool it will be. Like imagine the children are watching uh, the couple's album, their parents' album. Uh, after maybe 10 years and uh, mom is like, see, I, I was the person who got the ring, right? Awesome. Okay, so here's an image just as an example to show you how body language, expression, prop or location can add to your storytelling, okay? So, um, yeah, the bride is helping the groom wear the bow tie. No, she's not choking him, okay? So you can see the, by the body language how they are, that they are calm. Um, you can see uh, expression you can't see much over here. I purposely chose this image to show that uh, it's not always expressions that communicates. Okay. So you can see here, even with their eyelid and uh, their lips, so you can understand uh, their expression. Okay. The prop is basically the bow tie. Without the bow tie, I think it will not make or it will not have that much of an impact. The location again, um, this is basically big, uh, a, big, a big window, a screen which is obviously not very common in um, a home. It's basically a hotel. So even that adds to the story. Okay. Uh, there are basically three main elements according to me for good storytelling. The number one thing is the light. Uh, this particular shot, I got it after different, uh, uh, I mean like I, I played around with different angles and uh, I moved and positioned the light in such a way that I got this shot. Of course, I didn't uh, ask her to keep spraying all the time. Basically, they were uh, doing the makeup and I was getting set for this. Okay. 
uh, it would be stupid to ask her to keep spraying right yeah okay uh, although and uh, yeah the thing is about lighting it talks about or it shows the mood about the moment okay you can see in this it gives you the uh, feeling of the bride being really calm and relaxed of course we were panicking over there the bride was late it was 7:15 she was supposed to be on stage we're like will we get the couple shots or not yeah but the light helps in setting the mood so that's good for storytelling okay um next important thing is composition so composition again um, i'm not going to go through all the compositions i'm just going to talk about three basic ones um this really helps in storytelling and also makes your image look interesting um so uh, the first one is the rule of third uh, third so basically what you have to do is divide your image uh, into three equal parts uh, horizontally and vertically like what you see here and uh, and you you can see where the lines are intersecting right you have these purple points dots over there so that's the point or area where you want to keep your subject or the element in focus okay very rarely you will get all the four uh, where everything is there in uh, i mean like you wanted to add an interest or something and every dot has something of interest uh, but e like for example in this particular image you have the hands on one point you have the bride's face you have the brother in law's face you have the groom's face but the depth makes you realize that i'm actually concentrating or showing the groom okay uh the next shot uh, is the leading lines um uh, i was, in fact when i was looking for an example i was like this is perfect it's like i don't even have to put marks to show like what leading lines are meaning uh it's basically lines which uh show towards the interest okay and uh, this shot was uh, captured um, uh yeah so this was basically all the time you know the brides are the ones who get ready late right but in this case no the groom was late okay the bride was uh, ready for the photo shoot she came out early and we had time to play around with the sound so that's how we captured the shot so keep a keen eye to your surroundings okay another example of leading lines uh, and how you can frame so this particular scene the way we have captured it is uh, we were on the stage okay this is um, uh, a low angle shot uh, from the stage so below them you can actually see all the chairs the hall uh, of course few uh, cousins over there teasing the couple so we made them turn their back against them okay so that they don't distract them and uh, uh, we focused on the ceiling okay i mean like we are showing the ceiling in the background so if you see it's like dotted lines over there okay and you can see there again it's all leading this was an engagement so basically they're looking at the ring uh, so that's how we captured this shot and uh, another thing is another composition is frame within a frame uh, this shot the way we made it is uh, this was shot in humpty and um, you know that they won't let you uh, give you permission the couple insisted we go there and take some pictures we went there and uh, first we thought like oh it's all empty we can easily take pictures over here and then the security guard comes and uh, no you can't take pictures of course after bribing bribing him we gave us 10 minutes we had to finish the shoot within 10 minutes and uh, before he shoot us away so this was shot at that time um, so basically in this shot you can see there is a frame okay and we place the couple inside the frame so that uh, you uh, the viewer sees that position uh, it actually a frame within a frame always brings the you were to that um interest to that particular spot okay and also we used an empty space so that we can distinguish uh, the couple uh, from a cluttered background imagine if there was a tree or something the couple would not pop out okay um so what sets you apart is basically the way you use these compositions okay how you interpret them um is uh, for creating a unique uh, perspective or a unique um shot okay how you use them um so this shot is uh, basically uh, you know that we have uh, these uncle bobs like what they call in uh, western side of the world but in india it's like uh, you have these uncles and aunties who will definitely be in every single wedding i'm sure you all can relate to this um uh, so this particular scene you no know, i mean like all the time no uh, i i hear a lot of photographers complain like okay that there is uh, what do you guys do when these guys keep coming in the frame one we add them into the story okay 
So in case they come in between, no, uh, we can even tell the couple that see this person was there all the time. Uh, but usually we tell them in case we have an important shot planned or something, we tell them like this boundary is ours. Please make sure you shoot anything from the sides. Okay, and uh, we were lucky that uh, it wasn't with an iPad. Okay, so here's a quick exercise for you guys if you guys want to practice uh, composition. Okay, use your mobile phones. Uh, see, when you capture mobile phones in your normal uh, mode, okay, not the portrait mode. Portrait mode gives you the um, option of creating depth with your mobile camera, right? Um, so avoid that, okay? Use the normal mode and uh, take pictures. What happens is everything is going to look, most of the time, no, everything looks sharp, okay? And you then will start thinking, your brain starts thinking, how do you make an image interesting, although everything is sharp? So that way you will start realizing how important the background is. You will start realizing how you can use negative space to create interest. So all this happens uh, when you start practicing it this way. Okay, so the most important thing, the third most important thing, or I would say this is the most important thing is the moment, okay. Uh, the first two, you get, you can control, you get to control them. That is, you can control the lighting, you can control the composition. It's in your control, but the moment is not in your control. Okay. This is something which happens without any kind of, uh, thing telling you like, okay, no, uh, for example, take this shot. Okay. The bride is not going to say, I'm going to kiss the groom now, take a picture. Okay. It just happens. In fact, this happened in such a way that the groom ties the knot and uh, uh, it immediately, this happened. Okay. Now imagine me telling the couple if I was not ready or if I tell them like, I'm sorry, I was going through the pictures of the uh, shot. If I've taken it properly and I missed it, can you kiss him again? And uh, the groom will definitely not have this authentic smile. Okay. That shy, beautiful smile. Right. Okay, so be ready. Okay, that's super important for the moment because you can't make it happen again. Uh, this is a very emotional moment between the mother and the bride. So sometimes, no, even our shutters, uh, the camera shutter noise, no, tends to disturb. Okay, so we guys have to respect the space. We guys have to make sure that it's not. I mean, this is when you use the silent mode. Okay, so um, luckily in this particular shot, I was actually on a seventy two hundred. Um, so I was able to shoot this from far. I, I didn't uh, come in between or, uh, I mean, disturb the moment from happening. Um, so um, the thing is respect it. And uh, again, keep your eyes open um, for all these kind of moments. Okay. So how do you get these shots? Okay. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was, uh, for example, you can see this image in the right. Okay. It's not properly composed. It's not like the best framing. You can, in, in fact, I feel that I should have uh, somehow got the hand more in the picture. It's actually been, uh, it's cropped over there right now. Right. So sometimes, no, um, these things happen so spontaneously that you won't have time much to react. Okay. And this particular shot, you can see that the bride has um, uh, kind of like tipped off the data or, uh, and it's like uh, the rice is falling. You can see her expression over there, the look on the uh, groom's uh, face. So the moment is more important. Nobody is going to think about, oh, is it a, a fantastic composition? Is it like properly lit? But all they care about is the moment. Okay. So that's why it's super important. Okay. Sometimes you, know, you guys uh, will be ready for it. You, uh, you guys will wait for it and it might not happen. So be patient. It's okay. Um, be ready. Uh, most of the time what we do is uh, I'll usually have a single point uh, focus ready. I'll be anticipating where uh, I want to frame it and keep that uh, point over there waiting for the moment to happen. Okay. So be patient, be in the moment. This is super important. Okay. Um, don't check your phone. Um, uh, don't be distracted. Uh, always be present in the moment. Um, keep, uh, an eye out for all these kind of things when uh, they're happening. Um, yeah. Another example is uh, for being in the moment is uh, you can see that uh, the relatives behind the bride are actually holding her back. Okay. 
I knew immediately when I saw the um, relatives that they were going to do something, that they were going to try to stop the bride, okay, from hitting the papad or the apla on the groom's head, okay, uh, poor guy, uh, yeah. So uh, what happened was I knew I would get an awesome shot if I had come to this particular side of frame or the angle uh, to get their reactions, and that's how I got this shot. So that's the reason you have to be really in the moment. Okay. Next thing, keep shooting through the scene. Okay. Uh, keep shooting through the moment. Yeah. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is, just before the moment, start shooting, and even after the moment, keep shooting. If you see the first image, you can see that the flowers have started to fall, and you can see then the flowers have completely fallen down. Okay. And but you still notice that the umbrella is still not open. So in the next shot, you can see the groom's expression of like, did it not open? Oh God! It, it, it's like you can see the brother-in-law even trying to fix the umbrella. Okay, that's a really interesting shot, and uh, I would have missed that if I had not captured completely through the entire thing. So make sure that you take a few images more. Okay, and uh, thank God we are in the digital era where you don't have to worry about uh, how many pictures you take. It's not like film where you are limited. Okay, use that advantage. Okay, next. Um, uh, you can use layering for better storytelling. Uh, this is basically an idea where you have multiple subjects or objects in uh, laid in such a way that uh, uh, it tells multiple stories. Okay, so um, remember that also that um, the brightest area is the place where usually our eyes tend to go. Okay, so most of the time when you guys see this image, you know, first thing you see is the mother. Okay, because she's the most brightest in this area. And um, so a lot of times, you no, know, we tell all the brides like, make sure only you are getting ready in the room. Don't make uh, others, all everyone come inside the room so that we maybe we won't have space and all. But they won't have control all the time, right? Yeah. So this is that case, and uh, be authentic. Uh, keep it real. If that place was crowded, shoot it crowded. It's okay. Uh, but just find interesting angles over there to tell better stories. So this particular image tells the story like that they were not ready on time. Everyone is rushing. Everyone's trying to get the bride ready. Even the mother is like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get ready. Come fast. Uh, like that. Okay. That's the story over here. And uh, shoot from different perspectives. Okay. This is another important thing. Um, why I say this is because you can imagine when you are designing an album, you have multiple images to tell the story. Okay, this gives you multiple angles, perspectives, and it's imagine it like a comic book. You have so many different shots, okay, to help you uh, to help you communicate the story. Okay, so this was uh, shot in Mirai Green. Uh, this was a really long barat. In fact, the bride's family were waiting for a long time, and uh, it was a really hot sunny day. The day I forgot to wear my hat or cap. Yeah, so you can imagine. And yes, okay. Uh, don't always focus on the couple. Okay, I know there there are a lot of uh, photographers like me who will be um, waiting for the bride to get emotional. Usually during the time they're tying the knot, no, they get emotional. But in this case, I knew that the bride is not gonna cry. And uh, immediately the first people I look always is for the parents. Okay, so even the parents get emotional, right? So in this particular shot, um, I was lucky that I was able to frame them in such a way because this particular shot depends on where the parents are standing and the couple is standing, right? So I was able to get both of them. And this is a beautiful uh, shot where uh, you can see the mother's joy on her face, uh, the dad's emotional look. At the same time, uh, at what's happening in the frame. So don't only focus on the couple. Okay, um, use your surroundings, okay? Um, any simple shot, okay, it's a very simple shot of just the, um, um, what do you say, like the whole group walking towards a particular place. Even that, no, if you just shoot it just like that, no, in front of them, no, you'll just see a group of people walking towards the camera, that's it. How do you make it interesting? Use the elements, okay, use the elements in your surroundings. Uh, for example, in the left shot, you can see that it's basically they're entering a temple uh, just before the wedding and... Uh, uh, you can see uh, I've actually used the idol as an element over there to come uh, to um, 
tell a story that uh, this is basically happening in a temple and they're entering the temple. On the right, you can see that uh, this is shot in Royalton. Uh, the whole uh, group are walking towards. Uh, uh, this was shot just before the Bharat, okay, before the Bharat started. Okay, they look all calm right now, and trust me, they were not that calm. In fact, the uncle on the right corner, no, fell down, dancing, spinning around. Okay, crazy bunch. And uh, learn to see with your ears. Yes, you read and heard that right. Learn to see with your ears. Why I say this is because uh, I was actually shooting the couple and I suddenly heard uh, someone crying. I turned around and looked back and I saw um, it's actually the grandma got emotional. Okay, the grandma got emotional. The father was consoling her. Uh, a beautiful moment over here. And I would definitely miss this if I had not uh, heard that. Okay, so uh, always keep listening to what people are saying, keep listening to what they're talking because that will actually help you to know what is going to happen next. So you can anticipate what's going to happen next. Also, uh, you can hear a lot of people laughing, giggles and all that. Even there, that means that there's a story happening, there's something happening. So be attentive. Okay. Um, spend time with the couple. This is also a super important thing. Spend time with the couple, get to know them, get to know them personally. This helps you build uh, trust and uh, also gain their uh, gain their trust and also um, uh, make you understand what the couple likes and what they don't like. Okay. Um, so, for example, this particular shot would have not been possible if we had not spent time with the couple, um, uh, understanding what they do, what they like, and uh, you don't get uh, to shoot pilots every time, and you don't get an opportunity to shoot in a hangar. Okay. So imagine our regret if we had gotten to know this uh, later. Yeah. So always uh, try to spend time with the couple. Okay. Use a 24 mm or a 35 mm range lens. Um, uh, why? Because is it creates an impact where you feel. I mean, the viewer feels that they are in the moment. They are really there, and it's wide enough to add a little bit of background element as well. Okay. So you can uh, this shot you can see um, the expression of uh, uh, the groom uh, how hard he's trying to win. Uh, this is the same couple where uh, he got the applause smashed on his head. Uh, also stay close but be careful because after this you now the bucket actually fell down, the water flowed, and uh, it's not a good sight to see your pants wet in the wedding, uh, in the wedding. Okay. So now the serious part, uh, take your mobile phones, take the picture. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so how do you improve your art and craft? Experiment with different styles of photography. Try street photography, try fashion photography. Um, for example, we tried our uh, take on shooting uh, fashion and it really helped us make better portraits for wedding, uh, for all the brides. Um, even street photography helps a lot for framing, composition, anticipation, waiting for the moment. Um, next thing is break down and study the images that you connect with. You like an image, understand how the image was made. Try to understand what could be the thought of the photographer um, and why he made it. Okay, Use your imagination to come up with new concepts um, and get inspired by other mediums. Okay. So um, when I say use your image, imagination to come up with new concept, in fact, I'll show you, I saw something, I got inspired by an image and later we did that image. I'll show you that image in shortly. Uh, when I say get inspired by other mediums, it's basically, it could be a comic book, it could be a comic book cover, it could be a movie, um, it could be anything um, which uh, you kind of like, you can, take that particular thing and use it creatively for weddings. Okay. Um, when it comes to craft, first thing, like I said before, master your gear. When I say master your gear, it's basically whatever gear you have, know the in and out of it, know the disadvantages of it, know the advantages of it. Okay. Uh, next thing is education uh, is greater than gear. Okay. Why I say this is uh, your knowledge is super important on how to use your gear. Uh, what's the use of having a fancy gear when you don't know how to use it? Okay, so it doesn't make sense. So invest, when I say education, I'm not talking about uh, doing a master's or uh, um, any degree or something in photography. What I'm talking about is uh, attending workshops, attend uh, conferences, uh, watch a lot of videos uh, uh, like that. Okay, 
and create a new habit. Uh, make it a habit to at least take one picture um, every day. Um, try something like, for example, you want to be better at uh, um, maybe using lights. Uh, make it a point to use a single light and make interesting photos every day of the same particular um, object. It could be like this cup. Okay. Uh, you can just use gels, you can use, I mean like use black and white, try taking interesting shots of it, um, of the same thing, but in different lighting techniques. Okay. Keep learning, keep experimenting this, I can't stress, uh, I mean like this is super important. Um, uh, I would say like there are so many things that we have experimented first before, which we have actually used it on the wedding day. Don't try to experiment on the wedding day. Okay. So just remember the cakes get eaten, the flowers will die, but the wedding photos will last forever. Okay. Um, so don't screw it up. Wedding is, I mean like shooting a wedding as a wedding photographer is a huge responsibility. At the same time, it's a privilege and it's an honor when someone is giving you uh, the trust for you to shoot their weddings. So it's uh, very important for us to give it our hundred percent and to make sure um, that we give them beautiful images, which they can relive their moments and cherish. Okay. So this is the image I was talking about. Uh, so I saw an image where basically it's like these uh, virus kind of thing with a bat. It's like he's hitting the virus away. I saw that and I thought, why? Wow, oh, how can we use this for a wedding? And that's how I got this idea. So this is basically the couple smashing the virus. It's like, uh, yeah, obviously stay safe. Let's fight the virus together and get back to our normal lives. Okay. Maybe not fight together with uh, obviously with some social distancing and don't forget to wear your masks while shooting. Okay. Got any questions? Um, you can uh, ask them or type them right now and uh, follow us for updates and workshops uh, we're on uh, all these social media ads. thank you so much uh, for listening yes uh, so you can stop the share, share the screen oh sure 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 so guys we saw some beautiful images and uh, wonderful insights from karan and how to be uh, a professional photographer and how to be on time how to capture those moments and uh, yeah he also gave in input how to shoot and to be safe in this particular situation so great i think it was a wonderful session uh, there's a lot of comments which is positive and it's uh, appreciation basically they do not have any questions right now and yeah i don't think i have any questions from the audience maybe i have a couple of questions first question okay. uh, i think i asked in the initial uh, thing is that uh, how 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 the wedding raja or your doing in this particular scenario, how, what is the message you would like to give for the photo fellow photographers or the clients who um, are booking you for right now? Because I see, I had a lot of uh, like photographers saying uh, they had a booking before this pandemic started from international clients and everything is gone for toss. But right now there is intimate weddings happening, but but they're still scared and you'll, you'll not have a big team. So I, I, there's two part question. First is to your fellow photographers. And second is for the clients. So what do you have to say on that? Okay. Um, so for fellow photographers, uh, don't be sad that the weddings are not happening. Uh, look at it in a different perspective that you have a lot of time to uh, practice your art, experiment. Um, because usually as wedding photographers, you know, we get back to back weddings. We are usually not at home. We don't spend time with our family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, me personally, I strongly feel that that way when you get uh, into wedding photography, you know, there's so many things happening all the time. Okay. So you're always busy. So use this opportunity to spend more time, uh, reflect on your craft, uh, practice. So that is what I would say for our fellow photographers. Uh, and definitely see weddings will happen. Okay. There's no chance that weddings are not going to happen. Uh, maybe it's just going to be postponed for a few days or maybe the weddings are going to be much smaller. But as soon as we come out of this pandemic, definitely weddings are going to be back with the bang. I'm sure uh, our Indian weddings will not change. A uh, uh, lot of people are thinking right now that, okay, uh, the future is all weddings will be small, but I don't think that way. I think I'm sure that our uh, people will still want to have these loud, colorful weddings. And uh, yeah, so that's for the photographers. For uh, um, the clients, I would say, um, 
see uh, obviously the team is going to be smaller and it doesn't really matter as long as the couple's chemistry there is a story i mean um, weddings uh, even if they're intimate no uh, it doesn't mean that you will not have beautiful images it's it's all uh, how the photographer captures it okay so don't think that if you have a small wedding that means that you will not have good images okay um and obviously all the photographers are uh, fit i mean like uh, following all the safety norms everyone is sanitizing their gear uh, everyone is uh, checking their temperatures of the crew uh, they're wearing gloves wearing masks so um i i would say like um, it's fine it, it will happen um, so for clients yeah don't worry um, definitely photographers are smart enough they'll come up with new innovative ways to capture images even in a small um um what do you say like i said uh constraints uh, uh the um saying what i mean the line what i said earlier uh, uh, it's like when you are limited no that's when you bring out the creativity that's when constraints breed creativity yeah yes great uh, so i i completely agree on the point that the wedding will not get smaller because many photographers believe or many people believe wedding is getting smaller but there are a lot of inquiries which is happening for big wedding already <laughs> I don't know what they yeah. they have that confidence from, but they have inquiry for larger weddings as well. So we'll see how that goes and uh, be positive on that note. I have one more question yes. on your presentation. So okay. I saw a lot of images which is uh, creative. You use a lot of uh, artificial lights and to get out the images which you imagine, right? But yeah. in those weddings, sometimes you're not able to prepare. You said uh, don't experiment in the wedding. you experiment before you apply it in a wedding so that you have yeah. and you know sure what is going to happen and how to do it in certain cases you're not able to shoot with artificial lights and uh, all you have to do is natural uh, light okay. have you shot those kind of weddings and if it's there and uh, how comfortable is that for you okay yeah so uh, we have shot a lot of weddings with natural light itself uh, So basically, what happens is the reason why we use a flash or something is usually when the background is getting overexposed or something like that. Okay, uh, but definitely you can edit it in such a way that still it looks pleasant enough even if the backgrounds are exposed. You can go for the airy, bright look. Um, when it comes to experimenting, what I was uh, saying was uh, you need to experiment this before you do it on the wedding. Like for example, the virus shot and all. What you saw that. we actually tried it out uh, the day before in the night i i did it with my daughter okay so we took some cool ninja moves like this no uh, wait yeah like this and all in front of the camera and uh, on the wedding day no uh, we did hint the couple that there will be something that you guys will have to do hmm. see the thing is no sometimes no, we come up with so many different concepts okay on on the wedding day no the couple will not have the time or it just doesn't work out it's fine um so in fact that same wedding no we didn't have too much time to play with the couple uh, we had multiple concepts but uh, it just didn't happen we just were able to capture one of the concepts what we had in mind so what i meant is don't experiment over there what i mean is experiment with practicing before itself yeah. so that you know and you understand what how you need to focus where should be the placement of the couple so test it out go there and do it. Yes, I completely agree. Uh, thank you so much again. And for people who want to know about Fuji cameras, they can ask for Fuji from X India YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and all those things. And uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching this wonderful session. I think he has uh, very short and sweet. Like it's it's on point. It's not too elaborated and uh, it's it's not too stretched. So yeah, I have one question right now. Okay, great. So, which so yeah. Mr. Sandeep Kumar is asking, which best photo shoot in your life? I think which is the best photo shoot in your life? The one which I'm going to capture tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I think that's that, that's so, like many photographers do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but in reality, no. But it's actually different in reality. Uh, what happens is, no, uh, when you ask a photographer which is your best shot, no, everyone says like it's going to be the one which I'm going to capture tomorrow. Um, but in reality you know when you have clients coming in and asking you to show your portfolio you know then you have to show the photographs which you have captured <laughs> yesterday yeah right so uh, i would say that um, there's nothing like uh, uh, i mean like particularly uh, that i have to uh, point out and show but if i have to go with a wedding uh, which was like 
super exuberant. I mean, like it was fun in a lot of different ways. Then it has to be the wedding which we captured in uh, uh, Palace Jones. That was uh, Shashit and Manjushri. So uh, we worked with a uh, event management company called Bowtie. They did a fantastic job with uh, doing the entire uh, event. So uh, it was a really fun wedding. So uh, we got to shoot all different kinds of uh, um, thing. And there was actually pressure because there was another photographer. Uh, so obviously, uh, we usually avoid the situation where there are like different teams shooting the same wedding because there's there's a lot of pressure on both the photographers. I think uh, that and, is uh, uh, good yeah. for photographers right now because we can actually convince the client that don't hire two, three photographers from bride side and the groom side. One photographer is enough Correct. and because of less people and yeah, you have more flexibility that way. Yeah, go on please. Yes, yes. Definitely, definitely. So, you had anything uh, to add? Uh, no, I mean like, uh, yeah, so if if I had to choose uh, right now at present, uh, there are a lot of them, okay. There's even a couple which we shot in Chikmangur. Uh, this was way long back. It's Nishant and Aditi. I love their wedding also. I, I love any wedding where it's really emotional uh, also uh, at the same time. Uh, so personal connect was Aditi and Nishant. And, but if you have to talk about an awesome wedding, like everything, the Sangeet, the Haldi, uh, the um, Mehendi, all the ceremonies were fantastic. That was uh, Shashit and Manish. Great. Great. I think yeah. that's it. Uh, thank you so much guys for joining and thank you so much Karun again. And I'd like to thank Nayas for arranging this particular session to happen. And yeah. Uh, so I, I would like to uh, once again, uh, sorry, I, I would like to once again thank everyone for whoever is watching this. I hope I didn't bore you guys. Uh, and I hope you learned something out of it. And thank you Fuji so much for uh, uh, finding us and giving us this opportunity. Um, to uh, give us this limelight of uh, telling uh, our kind of work, I mean, like showing our work and uh, um, showcasing our skills. Yeah, thanks. So great. Uh, stay safe, guys. Be at home and do follow us on for Fujifilm and Wedding Raja for fo wedding photos and for guests for Fujifilm. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys.